Ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Yes. You want to make a... Need a picture? I'm gonna take one more because it's starting. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen. You spoke so much. You spoke so much about giving a charity for needy peoples. Um, anyone that wants to send before Pesach, please let me know. I will send you a Zen, quick pay Zen, direct to the family. Not then pass through, not through organization, not through the rabbis. Direct from your packet to their packet. A hundred percent interference free. Nobody will interfere and nobody will take any side money to himself or to the processing fee. There's no processing. You're going to get direct Zell to their own families if you want to do it. So if we're talking about health, that this is the first halakha regarding to Pesach, I will tell you something that I saw today. I heard that from Rabbi Zamir, and you know, it was so beautiful. Rabbi Shimshon Tulansky. Rabbi Shimshon Tulansky came in to his kolen in Yerushalayim, Shkunat Abuchar. You know that movie, Shkunat Abuchar? Yes. Now, he had a kolen, one of the biggest rabbi in Yerushalayim. He had a kolen in Shkunat Abuchar. One day, being the Rosh Yeshiva, being the Rosh Kolel, being the head of the Kolel, ladies and gentlemen, he came into the Kolel and he asked everybody that come to study, if I'm going to ask you a personal favor, are you going to do it? Everybody smile, Rabbi, for you, we're going to cross the oceans. Anything you want, we will do. Just ask. They thought that the Rabbi is going to ask big donations, something. They said, Rabbi, just ask. Until you're asking, whatever you ask, we're there. The Rabbi said, you sure you promise me that you're going to do what I'm asking? He said, yes. So he said, I'm going to ask you something so easy. We need volunteers for family before Pesach, not for money, to clean the house, to keep the children, to be a babysitter. Are you willing to do it? Each one of them jump. Said he doesn't even ask money. He's asking help for needy families. They said, he said yes. So the rabbi said, I'm gonna give each one of you tonight before you're leaving, envelope with the address. You're gonna to go to the address that you, that he said in the envelope. Everybody was excited. Each one of them left the kolel and he opened the envelope. And what did he say in the envelope? His own home address. <laughs> His wife. And the children. It's so easy for us to go to give money to somebody else, to help ours keeping somebody else's babies. Keep it. But when your wife asks you for your own baby, chutzpah, against tradition. A man is not supposed to do this job. How come somebody else's baby you're holding it? How come somebody else? You can do it for so many hours when we're talking about your own families. To the gentlemen and the men's and the rooms, I would say, charity start at home. Put your wife and your children in the highest priority. For the woman, I'm going to ask a personal favor. Dust, dust is not a chametz. And your husband and your children, they are not Korban Pesach. <laughs> a man that Pesach come closer, a wife making a face of Tisha B'Av, and ruin the whole environment of the house for the last two weeks. Nobody can breathe, nobody can breathe, nobody can walk, nobody can eat. World War Three, Ladies. Not everything in this world is chametz. You know, it's nice to clean the house. It's nice to clean the dust. But don't make dust chametz. Please. 
learn how to enjoy the experience. And I will conclude, this is only the introduction to this one. It was this Hasid that came into his Rebbe. And Moshe Ali told the Rebbe, Rebbe, I want to divorce. The Rebbe said, why do you want to divorce? He said, because my wife breaking Shabbat on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. He said, how come your wife breaking the Shabbat? He said, Rabbi, after candle lighting, 10 hours, sometimes 15 minutes, I'm sorry, 10 minutes, Sometimes 15 minutes she's still cleaning, washing. I cannot take it anymore. She's breaking Shabbat. And the rabbis look at him and said, and you, Moshe, what do you do in these times? <coughs> said, Rabbi, at one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm ready. After showers, after uh, uh, I'm sitting down in the room, in the room <coughs> and waiting for Shabbat. So the rabbi look at him and said, instead of divorcing, Maybe you're going to be ready in 4 o'clock and that's 1 o'clock. And the next, in that day I was, you can help your wife not to come in to the last 15 minutes of Shabbat or the last 2 minutes of Shabbat. Maybe it's the time for you to help your wife. Ladies and gentlemen, we are expert giving donations to needy people, needy families. We are expert. All of us is doing so well to do so. How many of us really give the time, the effort, and the money? to our own families. Charity started on. This is the introduction of this tonight class. If this is so, if last week we spoke about Pesach, today we're going to continue the second edition and we're going to overview the Agadah, Agadah Shep Pesach. I'm going to do it fast. This way each one of you will have something to say in the night of the Seder. How do we start Agadah Shep Pesach? Kadesh, Kadesh, Urchatz, Karpas, Yechatz, Magid, Rachza, Motzi, Matza, Maror, Korech, Shulchan, Arech, Orech, Tzafon, Barech, Alen, Rza. We have 15 steps of redemption. The 15 steps to go out from exile and to become free is that 15 steps. So let's go one by one. Let's see how far we're going to get. The first one is Kadesh. What is Kadesh? Simple, let's go simple and then I'm going to give a few ideas. Simple why Kadesh is Kiddush. To do Kiddush. To do Kiddush meaning to take a cup of wine and Pesach is a Indian. It's very important to drink red wine. It's very important to drink red wine, Dafka, not white. Memorize for the blood. And second thing is, real wine and not grape juice. It's very important to take wine and not grape juice because in the night of the Pesach, we have to look like we are wealthy. We are rich. It's all about being rich. Last week we spoke about, you remember how to make money and all the sigulot of Pesach. Anyone that came last week to the class, this year will become a billionaire. The gate of heaven will be open upon him. You remember last, last week uh, class? I'm not going to repeat. I send you today the class from last week. You have to listen to it. I send you today. Baki and Michael send us today the message. Said Rabbi Vakni, it's very important to send all this message, all these classes to each one that coming. Last week is crucial to listen to it. But let's continue. The first thing is wine. I, I don't know if I told you last week like this. That the woman allowed to wear all the jewelry in one time. Can you put all your jewelry and all your diamonds in one time? One shot, yes or no? Let's say every baby that you have, your husband buy you a ring, a diamond ring. For every baby, kind of gift. I'm just giving you guys the hint. You see, you get the baby, she get the ring. Ish. What's a pushkin? It's ah. called ah, push gift. Yes. I love it. I approve this mission. Push! The diamonds! The diamonds is coming! <laughs> like a prisoner, you're holding it. No push, no diamonds. No, no baby, no diamonds. Okay, I love it. Push, push gift. How do you call it? Push what? Push gift. Push gift. Okay. Now, I know what to do with my wife. <laughs> okay. I love it. The first time I hear these things. Okay, push gift. No, 
I approve this message. I love this message. Now, every day, every pregnancy, you have diamond rings. Now, you have maybe five or six of them. Each one of them, one carat, two carat, three carat, flawless. Cost of fortune. Can you put all of them in one shot? It's two reasons why not. The first one is Ainara. The second one, to memorize the destruction of Bet HaMikdash. You cannot put all your jewelry in one time. One of the things that we have to do to memorize the destruction is not only, or not only to break the glass in weddings, not only to leave empty spots in your, empty spot in your house when you buy in a new house, is mainly, one of the things is to have, not to wear all your jewelry in one shot, except one night. Which night is that? Let us say The night of the Seder, ladies, you can put all your jewelry one time because in the night of the Seder, we are multi billionaires. No Ainara, no Negara, nothing can touch you. You know why nothing can touch you in the night of the Seder? Some people, they put jewelry and diamonds on the tables. They put the glasses that they make the Kiddush have to be, not, not Alakha, tradition wise, real silver. To look like you are wealthy. The night of the Seder is a night that we are free and we act special plates in some houses. They will never use plastic plates. Original and the most expensive. Original and the most expensive. Because in that night is so important, like a king. You feel like a king. That night is relationship between us and the Almighty God. You have nothing to worry about Ayn around Negra or Pegra, nothing. You know why? If you realize the number four repeat himself doing the Agada many times for children, for cups, for questions, Manishtana. Four and four, why four? Four is because the name Yudke Vavke. And that night Borolam said, Ani Velo Malach, Ani Velo Saraf, I'm coming. I am the one that saved you. It's not even once that Moshe Rabbeinu mentioned in the Agada. Not even once. Do you know why? Because tonight is about God. Nobody in between. Us and God. Unreal. Because of that, that night they call Lel Shimurim, the night of protection. Because of that, all the blessing that we got last week we studied, it was in that night, the night of Lel Seder. If this is so, it's good to drink a cup of wine, red wine. For some houses, if it's no goy, they put not non-cooked wine. Non-cooked wine is the best wine for Lela Seder. If you have no goy in promises. Why? Because it's much more refined, better quality. It costs much more. If you're in a restaurant, you, you cannot do wine. No, definitely not. Definitely not. If not, the waiters are non Except if you cover the body completely and nobody touch it. Only you. Only you. Not the cubs, the bottles. Hasidim, they always cover the... Somebody showed me, a Bukharian Jew, said, Rabbi Vaknin, we have a jumo for the bottle. For Pesach, for Pesach, a jumo. And then you put music, Bukharian music, and the bottle starts to dance. Boje, 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 boje. And you see the button, the one we talking. Now, uh, you know, they have, this one of the reasons. So now, we study Kadesh. How many, how, you know, what's the amount that you have to drink and every cup? How many cups do you have to drink? Four cups. Four cups. Do you know why four? Tonight I'm going to share with you a unique explanation that you're going to share in Nella Seder, you never heard it before. The first time that I release, out, out of respect to the second edition of Pesach, especially then. Emmanuel, especially for you, Kappa. Especially. Listen to this. Why four? First of all, why four? So one reason we said four because of the name of God. We're drinking four. Second one is, what's the most famous? No, no, don't admit that you... You have to know it. What? 
the four, the four, the, the four words of redemption. When God took the Jewish nation, he mentioned it in a four different version. God said, um, I will take you out in four different versions. Okay, beautiful. So, what's the big deal? Okay, God, God mentioned it four different times. What's the connection between four glass of wine? Drink four cup of water for each time. The Galati, boom, the Ocetti, why wine? I'm going to give you today two explanations. You're going to share both of them in the Agada. Abraham, you know why four? Because the Jewish nation didn't leave Egypt right away. They left it, they left Egypt gradually. Gradually meaning. The first act was they stopped being a slave. They continued to work, but they are not slaves anymore. The second one is they stopped working. They still stranger in a strange land, but they stopped. They're not green card. There's no, no uh, citizen, but they are not slaves completely. They are not even working for them. The next step is they got citizen in the land. And the last, the last stage is when they left Egypt. That's it. They are behind. You see, every time we drink a glass of wine or any alcohol, what exactly happened? You lose yourself. Beautiful. So the first one is you change something in yourself. Every time you're going into a driving class, you know, when you get too many points, they ask you in to go to a class. One time I went into a class and driving class, I had to drive. And fences for a driving. It was a policeman that uh, sent me because he was I was late to shoot her. It was many years ago, maybe 20 years ago. And I was not driving fast. I was flying slowly. What? And I was flying. But I met I was flying so much that I didn't see it was a hidden police. I cut him off. I cut the guy off and he was a bumping on the road. And the road that you can drive 25 miles, I was 75 miles, and it was a bumping. I flew in the air, you don't understand, my car in me. And the, and the police guys behind me opened the light. <laughs> he said, excuse me, why are you driving so far? I said, listen, I have a short one. Do you want to come to see me? Second edition of Passover. <laughs> he was not, he was, he was not laughing. You know, I was laughing, he was not laughing. <laughs> Say, thank God you are a rabbi and I respect you. I'm not going to send you to the jail for what you did, but you're going to have to take a class. And one of the things that I study in the class is they show you how much every glass of wine affects you. Beautiful, you know? And I saw what exactly happened one cup and two cups. And then I said, you know what? This is the message of Pesach. Every cup change. Beautiful, huh? You never heard something like this. We drink in to memorize that the stage to live out was four different stages. Four cups. But this is only introduction to the second explanation. The second explanation is a bomb. A million dollar ideas. If you can, if any of you here know this, that explanation, he will get free dinner for one week, him and his wife, and just to make sure that, that we're not going to be uh, bored, another couple with you. Thank you. <laughs> another couple with you for one week, any restaurant you choose, sponsored by no other double mem, Mazan and Moshe. M&M. Not by the company M&M, by our own M&M. Moshe, hey, then Mazarov is done. You see, you and me can get, can be great again. We can become, we can open the kosher Eminem, you know. The Chalav Israel Eminem, you know. Not the Chalav Ishmael, the Chalav Israel, Baruch Hashem. Yes, what's the answer? What's the answer? Ah, the question is? <laughs> Why we drinking four cups and I'm going to give you a hint. I will even I'm going to make it easy. And why? What's the amount that each cup have to be? Minimum. You know what's the amount? Yeah. How much is three? 
This woman too yeah. know too much information. Most of the is in the second you're going to see, they open the air condition to make food. So they, they become hot. I see Moshe sweating already. One week restaurant. What exactly happened? I have donation. I just gave the synagogue donation to build the synagogue. Rabbi. They didn't leave nothing behind, you know. Baruch Hashem, don't worry. God, hold it up. Yes, okay. So 86. 86 gram. 3.3 ounces. This is the minimum. Otherwise, you can take small cups. Small cups. And drink, then it's no problem. This is, I believe, six ounces? Yeah. Seven? Yeah. So, 3.3 or even four is this side. This side. This is the size of the wine, and you can drink it four times. Why now, in America, they call it 3.3 or four ounces. In Hebrew, they have a very, very different version of um, how do you measure how much? You know how much you have to be? 86. Gram. Yeah. 86 gram. Why 86? So the Rabbanit said beautiful. 86 is numerical number of cup. How do you write cup in Hebrew? Chaf, Vav, Samech. Samech 60, Chaf 20, Vav 6, 86. You have to drink 86. According, by the way, to another opinion, I believe the Chazonish, he write that you have to drink a hundred and fifty-seven. Nice. How did he get to hundred and fifty-seven? No. Because the word "kos male" full cup is a hundred and fifty-seven. Huh? Right. No, no, but samak. What is samak? What is samak? What is the same volume of Wait, water. 86 gram. Not gram. Mechila, mechila. It's not gram. Can you check? Can you check again? What's this? What's the amount? 86, not gram. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I will tell you right away the, the way that you measure it here. Milli, milligram? Milliliter? Okay. Now, the number 86 is, is a lucky number. The question is why? Why be met with drinking four cups? Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you something you never heard before. Do you know why? Because for how many years the Jewish nation was supposed to be in Egypt? 400. That one? 400? It's supposed to be 400. They have one opinion 400 is what God promised to Abraham Avinu. They have another opinion, 210 is what the Jews, God told Yaakov, reduce them. What's another opinion, 86? And they have another opinion, 420. Milliliter. Milliliter. Mil 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 ah, milliliter. So 86 milliliter. 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 Okay. Okay. How do you say it in English? Milliliter. Ml. 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 Well, perhaps. Okay. That's it. You got the message. <laughs> you got the message. <laughs> now, listen to this. According to the Pasuk, the Jewish nation was supposed to be in Egypt 430. Now I'm going to ask you, how much is 86 times 5? 430. 430 years is when the Jews were supposed to be in Egypt. How many years did Jews really serve in Egypt like a slave? 86 years. Uh, in a second, I'm going to prove it to you. Do you know why we're drinking four cups and we leave the fifth cup on the tables? Until now, we thought we're leaving it for an hour and it's is beautiful. Today, I'm going to tell you a different explanation. Because the fourth cup is to say thank you that God reduced 86 years. The second cup to say thank you that God reduced another 86. Number three, another 86. Number four is another... So by Ahmed, the Jewish nation so long, only 86 years. So we're drinking four cups to say thank you to Hashem for reducing, redu reducing wow. 486. Wow. And the only one that stay, how do I know that? Rabbi, beautiful, beautiful, wow. Can you prove it to me? I will tell you. 
What's the name of the older sisters of Moshe Rabbeinu? Miriam. Beautiful. Do you know what's the meaning, Miriam? What's the explanation? Bidr. Bidr, Mar. Mar is Bidr. Which father called his own daughter Bidr? We're looking for beautiful names. Except America, and sometimes they call me, some of my students, they have such horrible names. But this is because they don't understand Hebrew. Rabbi is such a beautiful name. If you just knew the meaning, you would never. But you know, I don't blame him, they're American. But the father of Moshe Rabbeinu was the biggest rabbi in the world. He was the chief rabbi of his generation, Amram. He was one of the seven tzaddikim, or the ten tzaddikim that never made mistakes in his life. He was Kodesh Kodoshim. If this is so, how can you call your own daughter bitter? Because in that day that she came to the world, slavery just began. The slavery started from the minute that she came. So Amram, in order to memorize the slavery, he called his own daughter Bidr. Miriam, a Bidr river, Bidr water, Bidr sea, whatever, Bidr. Now, now in the second. No. I will tell you, I will tell you, I will tell you. I will tell you. you know why Amram did it? You know why Amram did it? No, no, anyone can answer why Amram did it? Is anyone in the Torah that called Bidr also? Imanu, Imanu, you should you know the answer. What yeah, water. You drink water. 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 Give him wine. Don't give him water. Ben-Oni. Almost Benoni. My son that suffered, yes. But it was another one. Another one. That called Bidr. Bidr. What are the rabbis today? Dinner? Yes. Your husband is a lucky man. May you and your husband will have a long and healthy and happy life to raise your children the Torah and Chupan and to be. That you and your, may you and your husband will be stick and stuck to each other until 120. Amen. May you gonna have. Ah, what did we say? Mr. Shalom, what did we say today? We're gonna give you what? Push gift. You know what push gift? Everybody together. Are we gonna give what? Push gift, Baruch Hashem. Yes, what is push gift? When you push to bring baby, you get in the diamonds. Baruch Hashem, push gift. I just said it today. So this year, Chudachat, Chudaboshku, you're gonna get the push gift and we're gonna get by Let us say Amen. I didn't hear what I didn't want to hear. I heard what I want to say, you know, please. Now, <laughs> gentlemen, listen to this. You're on my side or my wife's side? No, I said the oh, okay. came down. I see you every morning, you know. No, <laughs> okay, <laughs> listen to this. Bene Merari. Levi was the only tribe that didn't serve in slavery. But they want to feel the pain of the Jewish nation. How did they feel it? They call their own children very strange names. Kehat, weakness. Merari, bitterness. What's that one? Uh, Gershom, stranger. What the name is that? You call your own son stranger? Weak, bitter. They want to feel the pain. They call it in Hebrew, no se be'onim chaveru. When you carry, when you carry the pain of somebody else. So Amram want to see free the bitterness of the Jews. I'm not going to give my daughter happy names, like my life is good. Amram is from the tribe of Levi. Already his uncle was his name, is Mary. His uncle is Mary. So let's call my daughter also bitterness. Now, Gabriel, if this is so, what is the age that Moshe Rabbeinu Left Egypt. When he took the which age? 80. 80. What's the age that Aaron Akoin was? What's the age of uh, Miriam? 86. Oh, the lucky number 86. How many years we've been in slavery? 86 years. You know, you know? The life of Miriam. The life of Miriam was with drinking four glasses to memorize. The 86 less and less and less and less. Wow. What the. Gentlemen, let's continue. Kadesh. Another thing that we're missing in Kadesh, what? We have to drink with? 
is very, very important. Why we lean to the left side and not to the right side? First of all, not to choke. Why not? What's have to do with choking? What's the, what's the pipe? We have two pipes. One of them in charge of the food. One of them in charge of the... The breeding is in that side. And the food is in that. So when you sit in like this, you don't block the food one. The breeding you're going to breed. But this way when you eat, when you're leaning, one reason. Another reason, a king always... Most of the kings had the saw where on the left side. His right hand men always have to be available. Either because either because he has to sign a checks or a certain decree or decision. So he's right. Or either because he's the only one that's allowed to be in the room with the saw. To take the saw in case of somebody surprise him. So this is the reason and that night that we are a king, we have to act like a king. Kadesh, Kadesh. The next one is? <laughs> what if somebody is a lefty? Oh, but the pipe is still the same. My student, my student <laughs> asked me these questions and I answered him that the pipe is a good question. The pipe is the same. So for that reason only, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue. Wash hands. Wash hands. Wash Wash in hand. We're washing hands with no beracha. Do you know why we wash hands with no beracha? Why? <laughs> Any food and vegetables that you eat with your hand, that you eat with your hand, meaning soup, you don't eat with your hand, even though that is wet, but you eat it with a spoon. Food and vegetables that you eat with your hand, that they are wet, you have to wash your hand before you eat it. What's the reason? That your hand is not going to be tame, and then they're going to give the water or the wine or the oil, they have seven liquids, they're going to make them tame, not pure, and then they're going to make the food not food. So in order to stop the impurity, you wash your hand. One reason. Second reason is to give the child, to awake the child to ask, Abba, manishtana. What exactly is the difference? The whole year, we're like in our home with seven lakhs. No guests, no nothing. We're cheap and we're stingy. We're trying to save. Suddenly, Pesach, you act like a king. Call the chvin at every hole, anyone. What exactly happened, Abba? I know you for the whole year. You're the cheapest person in life. And suddenly, you become so large. What exactly? I know you. You barely keep Shabbat. And suddenly, before in Pesach, you wash in hand before food, not before bread. Why, why, why Tzadik, Moshe Rabbeinu? Ma nishtana alayla. You do in, did you ever saw to our dears, somebody washing hand for food? We all know the Alham. How many people really do it? He's a Tzadik, you know that. Yosef is a Tzadik. Not for no reason, his name is Yosef. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Yosef, Yosef Hashem, Alechem, Kachem, Elif, Pahamim. You see? But number three, Gavriel, you know why I'm washing hand? Because the hand of a person, before you come in, in to get redemption, you have to remember, your hand have to be clean. When you're going in to a courthouse, they always ask you to swear. How do you swear? You pick up your hand. Or you touch your hand and suffer to And the, whatever, Bible, whatever they, they put on, you have to put your hand. When you go in, in love, the, 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 the Lord, God forbid, to a casino that you will never be there, they always touch the hand. Show you the hand. You're going in. You're going in. And any place that you do, you're looking for panasa, you open your hand. Why the hand is so important? So somebody asked me once, Rabbi, what is the highest... Uh, Part of the body. The tool is in the highest part of the body. So most of us is answer the head, right? No. The hand. Do you know why the hand? Do you know why we wash in hand all day long? 
before food, before bread, and the morning when you wake up. Why are we washing hands so much? Why? Do you know why when you're coming in from a grave or from a niftar, you wash your hand and you leave the... It's all about the hand, always hand. What exactly? Do you, you know why? Because one avera you cannot afford to do. That one is the most dangerous avera. When God brought the, 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 the flood, the flood of Noah didn't come because of Shabbat or because of Mikveh or because of Kashrut. It came because stolen money. And night, the night of the Seder, wash your hand. Clean your hand from stolen money. Clean your hand from all the averot that you do with your hand. Hand is the most important things. How did the Pasuk said? Vatemale aharetz Hamas. You know why God brought the flood, the, the, the flood? Because the country was full of thief. Gezen. Stoning money and stoning items. Something that in our life becomes so common. We have to be very careful. The second stage of Pesach is washing hand. Number three, Kadesh Urchatz Kapas. Kapas, wow. I spoke today in my class and I told him, I never saw people that so excited over Kapas. You know what's Kapas? Some community is potato, really potato, potato. I do potato. Regular potato, that's it. And as our community, what's the tradition salary? I met many men that bump into each other and said, my brother, actually, they open a restaurant, the steak over there is ash. I met people that do not like meat, they like fish, they bump into each other, they said, this restaurant of fish is the best one. I never in my life been a rabbi for 29 years, almost 50 years old. I never met people that bump into each other. Said my brother, they open a restaurant, the carpas, the salary over there. Yes. We have to go to text. Who eats salary? Suddenly Pesach, carpas. Everybody become a, a, you know a dramatic and a centerpiece items in the carpas. Why? Why? What is so unique about the carpas? So the simple explanation is to awake the children to ask questions. Abba, when exactly you eat kapas before food? Who is eating except Bukharin? Bukharin, they're the only one that you can see the best food ever. They put the most delicious food and then between the good salad, they have salad that nobody cut, you know? Tomato on such a side, cucumbers on another side, and like this, and nobody cut. I never understand. Maybe one of you can explain me the logic. It looked like they took it from the garden, they left it in the plate. They still have the dudes, you know? And it's fancy restaurant, fancy schmancy. You pay $300 for a plate, and you see tomato like this. Looking at you, why bad things happen to good people? Why me? Did you understand what's the logic of this? At least cut it, Israelis. We like Israeli salad. We make it fancy schmancy. Nothing, nobody touch it. You see people in the middle of the food, they eat so nice, and then, what? Well, how do you call it? Malefafon. Cucumbers like this. How can you give the cucumbers? You need, you need, carry, you need, the, you need to carry the cucumbers. And in the middle, $300. Tomato, you need, you need, you need the weight. You, you know, I saw people in the middle of the food. They carry the tomato like a weight, you know. They make in practice. What is this? Except Bukharian in a normal place, you will never find it. Suddenly, carpas become issue. Why? Why carpas? Gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, ladies, few explanations that you're going to share in the night of the Seder. The first one is, learn how to enjoy the simple items in our life. You want to be free? Free from slavery? Remember, if you cannot enjoy the carpas, you will never enjoy the steaks. Because when you're going to eat the steaks, it's always the better steaks. When you're going to build your home and you're going to finish and you're going to renovate it and you're going to pay half a million dollars for innovation, and day later, you're going to look in your neighbor and he built a house, selfie, just selfie next to the house. Unreal. And your wife looked at it, so how is our home? Shem Shamayim. For the sake of, what's the sake of God? 
I just pay half a million dollars in the If you're not going to know how to be happy right now, in this situation in life, I have, to, I have a good news to, to share with you. You will never be happy. Even if you're going to have a billion dollars or a few billion, you will never be happy. If you cannot be happy with the kapas, simple items in life, to wake up in the morning and to say, God, thank you. Thank you for me having a roof above my, above my head, that I have a bed, I have a wife and children, I have everything that I need. I have everything that I need. Kapas. The night of the Seder is coming to teach you. Do not wait for the Ospelo or the, 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 the Osevo that you're going to eat later. Learn how to enjoy Kapas. Simple, what a message is that? With the, you know, how many times your husband is giving you a watch? And the only thing that you're looking, ladies, is what's the company names? Or a bag. And the only thing is original or not original. Why you cannot say thank you and tomorrow complain? No. A minute that you realize that it's not original, that's it. What's the problem with enjoying regular shoes? No brand names. I remember Payless was one of my favorite shoes, my favorite companies. You pay less. And I remember the times of BOGO. You know, you remember BOGO? I used to call my wife, go and go. You buy two and you get another five on the house. Just take the shoes. I was... Because I was the, one of the main customers that closed down. I was always there. <laughs> I love it. I don't know, what's the difference between my shoes that cost, after BOGO, $11 shoes to use shoes that you pay $150 or $300? One thousand. I'm sorry, easy, easy. Easy, you jump, you cannot come back. $700, $1,000 shoes. What's the difference? I it. Why we cannot learn how to be happy with the simple, items and life. The night of the Nel Seder is coming to teach us. You want to be free? Learn how to enjoy the Karpas. Second explanation. Karpas. You know what's Karpas? Karpas. What's the Karpas? Karpas you can define in two different ways. Kar. Kaf, Resh, Pei Samach. <coughs> Either you put <coughs> Samach Parech, meaning how many Jews went in to exile? 60 no. ta... No, 60 ribu. 600,000. 600, so the number six with Parech, with slavery, is in the word Karpats. But you can read it in different ways. Kar and Pas. You know what's Kar and Aramit? Kar is a clothing. Clothing with stripes. Clothing with stripes. Who is the first one in our history that wear clothing with stripes? You remember that his father gave him Kutonet Pasim. A clothing with stripes. What does Sefer Tzedek have to do with Agadash uh, Pesach? What does Sefer Tzedek? You remember on Manish Tana? Now you're going answer, you to answer, you're gonna answer one of the questions of Manish Tana. What's your husband name? Vadim. Listen to this. I need you. I need you to be in focus. One of the questions is, how come the whole year round you never dip? And suddenly, tonight, you become master of dipping. Thousand Island, uh, how do you call it? Uh, garlic mayo. Uh, Russian what? Dressing. Russian dressing. What else? Yeah, you become a dipping. American style. Dipping. Everything dipping. They eat... Uh, chips. They have special dipping for every chips. Chips like this, red dipping. We become a dipping. Suddenly in Pesach, the whole Jewish nation, we dip in twice. When exactly we dip in twice? When? One of them, when we eat the carpas, we dip it. What did we do? We took the carpas and we dip it in salty water. The second time we dip in is when? Koech. is in the end. One of them is in the beginning, one of them is in the end. I will tell you something tonight you're not going to believe. Hold tight. Do you know why we dip in twice? Do you know why we do it? Why we dip in twice? Yosef, the first one to tell us, before you start the story of Egypt, before you know why we spent 210 years, the Karpas is coming to teach us why we went into exile, why we have problem in life. And the last dipping is a minute before we're going out, before the food. Before, on the way out, 
you have to know what is going to take you out. One tuka scene is clothing with stripes and tears. Ladies, you are export of crime. A woman have buttons that 22 years, I still didn't figure out where is the buttons. <laughs> that they can cry from a zero to a, to a hundred under one second. You tell something to your wife from nowhere, she's crying to cry like it's not tomorrow. A minute later she's mine. It takes exactly a minute. Now, ladies, I'm going to ask you a simple question. What is the taste of tears? Oh. Salty water. Come, the Karpas, and teach us. Do you know, before you start the story of Adim Ainu, we were slain for 200 and tears. You know what's the reason? Because it was a man with the clothing with stripes that his brother wanted to kill him. And then they sold them to Arabs. They sold them to slavery. And all the reason that we went down from baseless hate. When one Jew hate another Jew, when one brother hate another brother, is when we, you know you are on the way of slavery. And you know how you're coming out? What is correct? We're taking matzah. We're taking maror. Matzah symbolized tzaddik. Maror symbolized rasha. You stick it together, meaning, even though it's not a tzaddik, we're still one nation. We're still brothers. I still have a place for him. If you can accept a person that is not like you, Shulchan Uruch, go and start eating. The food is arriving. You're already on the way out. Baseless hate is the cost of exile. Baseless love is the cost of redemption. One of them is in the beginning of the stories, when we didn't start yet, and the other one is when we end the exile. The ending of the exile is Korech. Korech meaning, how do you write Tzibur in Hebrew? No Nikud, just Tzibur. How do you write Tzibur? Tzibur meaning? Crowd. A crowd? Congregation. Congregation. Congregation is Tzibur. Crowd is Tzibur. When you have 10 people to pray of it, is Tzibur. You know how you write Tzibur? Tzadik, Bet, Resh. Why these three letters? Do you know why these three letters? Tzadik stands for Tzadikim. Bet, Benonim. Resh, Rashaim. If you can combine these three together, you can have a great minyan. You can bring love among the Jewish nation. God wants us to be, un to be unified. Not to abend our values. Not to break, God forbid, the Torah. <coughs> but definitely to love every Jew. Karpas. Karpas is when you're taken in and you dip in the salty waters to remember the tears that Yosef HaTzadik was crying to his own brothers and begging them, please, do not sell me. Do not throw me to a pit full of scorpion and snakes. Do not kill me. That is until now is painful. Because until now we didn't fix it. You know how you know how I know that we didn't fix it? That's when you're gonna write as well. Because very rare, the night of the seder, always every year, falling down exactly in the same night of Ramadan? Ramadan? <laughs> <laughs> Who said Ramadan? <laughs> I don't know the water that this table got. Something's wrong with the water. Maybe it's, it's reused. I don't know. Maybe reused. <laughs> ben Hu, please bring a new water, please. Something is wrong at that table. I don't know, Ramadan. You are not a good one. Ramadan, boy, what you? It was good. I'm sorry. Behemet, it was perfect. Okay. No, no. Anyone know the answer, please? Moshe, he want to give sponsorship, please. Moshe is good. M&M is good. Moshe, we
mazal, mazal is begging, please answer the questions. Always, every year. If this year, Tisha B'Av is which day is Wednesday? Um, Night. You know which holidays is going to fall down in that day? Tisha B'Av. Always. The day that Pesach appeared, few months later, meaning five, every day. The day of the week, yes. Every Moshe Shabbat, Monday, Tuesday, any days. Look to our deals. Always Tisha B'Av is for. This is one of the reasons that one of the things that we put in a, in a plate, you remember the Pesach plate? Uh-huh. One of the items is what? Eggs. Who usually eat eggs? Aven. What do you put in Avelut and Pesach? We are kings. We are freedoms. To remind you the nine days of Av. What's the connection between Tisha B'Av to Pesach? Do you know why Bet HaMikdash got destroyed? Because of baseless hate. Karpas. If you're not going to fix the Karpas, we will never go out from exile. We have five months from Pesach exactly. Five months to fix it. And if not, God forbid, you're going to have to celebrate once again, sitting down on the floor and crying that we're still in exile. What a message, Abba, what a message. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight you're lucky. Kadesh Urhatz, Karpas Yachatz. I'm going to end with this one. You said, let's go. Huh? Continue. Esh, Esh, Rabbi Esh. Maybe before Pesach, I'm going to send you a few messages in video. One of them is the most important message of Pesach. Which items, if you didn't send Pesach, you did not, you said the Chuvah. Pesach, man. why? Mm-hmm. That one we're going to keep to the message. Oh. We're not going to give it to you so easy. We're going to give you a full message, few messages from Pesach, Matzah, Maru. Let's continue. We are in Yachatz. Why are we breaking the middle Matzah? What is Yachatz? Yachatz is we take the middle Matzah, we break it, we keep the big one to a Fikoman, meaning to the end of the meals, in the small part, we eat when we do a mochi, mochi matzah. When we do a lachelat matzah, we do a mochi, we eat. The question is why we break it. The simple reason is because a poor man do not have complete bread. A poor man have usually eat any slice you give him. And the Holocaust, nobody was waiting to get loaf of bread. Today we became so spoiled that God forbid if your wife will ask you to eat the challah that she bake in Shabbat on Sunday. Crisis in the house. What a chutzpah, why you ask me? Why not? Why not? Nechem Kodesh, why not? What is so bad about the bread? Only one day. People in the Holocaust will be dying to have bread that being baked one week before. Not one day. We became fancy schmancy. A poor man eat whatever you give him. We break in because in the beginning of the Agada, we're still poor. One. Simple explanation. Another explanation is Yachat is teaching all of us. I wanted to remember what in the Seder. It's a great message to the children and to yourself, but especially to your children. It was this guy and a Jew, they became good friends, best friends, Moshe and Stephen. Now, the both of them used to go to collect money. Both of them is broken completely, poor. Their job is to collect money. One day, Moshe had mercy on Stephen. They didn't eat for a few days. They used to eat leftover. He came to Stephen and said, Stephen, I have a good news to share with you. The next two days, you don't eat nothing. So why not? He said, because the Jewish nations, I'm a Jew, they have holidays that call Passover, the night of the Seder, all of them is rich, diamonds, jewelry, uh, silver cup, silver plate, silver knife, silver everything. You don't understand. And they have food that you never saw. Unlimited food and the most fancy food. 
you come with me and you're going to enjoy the food. So I understand. Moshe, I'm not even a Jew. Moshe, I said, no. Nobody knows that you're not a Jew. You're just going into the synagogue with me. You could put kippah. And you're not talking. And your name is Menashe. Menashe? Okay, Menashe. Nobody knows that you're Stephen. Okay. This Menashe, this guy put kippah. He said, in the night of the Seder, we have a mitzvah. What's the first mitzvah? Hospitality. Call the chfin. Everybody obligated to invite somebody to his home. He said, that's it, Moshe. You have nothing to worry. You, uh, for sure, one of the synagogue will invite you. He's walking in with uh, Moshe, the Stephen, the Nashua. He looked around. Now, he was Mormons. You know Mormons? Mormons is the one that look. Now, you know, Sephardim, we like a lot of imagination. We are experts in imagination. I do. We walk into our synagogues, and all this Faradim look. Wow, he looks like Moshe Rabbeinu. This guy is tzaddik. The other guy said, "What tzaddik? Tzaddik Nistar. He's told he is, he's not even a Jew. You know, tzaddik Nistar. He's Mekubal. He looks like this. Each one of them, they start to fight. Who's going to invite the guy? This guy is. I'm going to invite him. The richest guy in the can town said, "Get out of here. I'm going to invite him. Nobody can take him. This tzaddik Nistar, I will take him. What's your name, Menashe? Shulu Menashe, Menashe. You come to my home." He took this menashe home, happened to be that, you know, they start, the wine that he had is not cooked, doesn't know that he's a good, and not only not cooked, the highest quality of alcohol. Now, you know what you mean to drink wine, glass, and he gave them not eight, 86 millimeter, how do you call it, milligram? Yeah. Millimeter. He gave them, I don't know, cost money. He gave them the big cup. You know, the big one that you can sell. And he said, you have to drink most of the cups. Drinking wine with empty. He was getting dizzy. Now he needs food right away. He's like this. He's moving. Where is the food? So then after Kadesh, what comes? Chatz. Even a guy know that the Jews, after they wash their hands, what exactly happened? Bread. He wash, and then they say, Kapas. What's Kapas? They give them this small salary, and they tell them to dip it. With the salty water, so where's the food? He need to eat it. Moshe told him. He continued, happened to be that this rich man was not only rich, also the Chacham. He spoke the story of the Agadah one and a half hours. Talking and talking, personal stories. And Egypt, Tai Dayenu, every, every word he sing. Tai Dai, Tai Dayenu, where's the Dayenu? Leave the Dayenu, I need food. One and a half hours, the stomach and the back is getting me coming closer. <laughs> and then he said, wash in hand. This time is right. He's going to wash hand. And then, Motsi Matzah. Happened to be that this rich man Matzah was the Matzah that you need a hammer to eat. You know some Matzah to break it, you need a hammer. Old fashioned, thick, like a, like a wood. He break himself to eat it. And after this Matzah, so where is the food? You're not done. He said, you know what exactly happened? Marur. Now, not the Sephardic Marur. The Chundul, the Ashkenaz Marur. The Marur that when you make it, it's two hours of tears, and after you eat, it's another six hours. The guy eat the Marur, he stood up, he said, I hate you, the Jews. He kicked the table and left. He said, tomorrow, I'm going to smack, I'm going to give him a punch. This Moshe is a liar. I always never try, I never trust them. A Jew you cannot trust. He lied to me, he told me it's going to be food. Six o'clock in the morning, he's waiting in the synagogue, and he see Moshe coming. Looks like a balloon. Hashem, Hashem, barely move. See him smiling. He said, Moshe, why are you smiling? He said, you know how many food I ate yesterday? It was worldly, it was the best food ever. He said, no, so, Stephen, what exactly with you? He said, which food? I never saw food. He said, you went into the richest guy in town. What do you mean not food? Where, where's the food that he put? He said, he never put food. He put me matzah, he put me dick, he put me wood. He gave me salary, I don't know what salary, with salty water. The guy is stingy. He put me bitterness, I got me dizzy and give me drink for kusot. I don't know what exactly. So Moshe looked at him and said, a go is a go. You will never change. So what's the meaning a go is a go? What's the difference between you and me? So said, what's the difference between a Jew and a go? It's one centerpiece different. I go, you have no patience. If you just wait another five minutes. After Maro, what coming? Korech Shulchan Another five minutes in life. 
If you just had the patient, you know what? Because you know what? You know what? You know what? Teaching us. Wait until the end. Wait until the end. If you're going to wait a little, you're going to see how things in life will be so organized and so perfect. Things that today look like crisis, tomorrow can be the greatest news that ever happened to us. Sometime in life you're being fired and look like this is the worst things and you want to jump and you get depression and you don't sleep for one week. One year later, because they fire you, you open a business and Beria and Ara, you met. You know what you do? You send sending flowers to the guy that fired you. Because of you, I became so rich. If you didn't fire me, I would still work for you for seven dollars an hour. Because you fired me and I had nothing to do. So tell me the fire was good or not good. But in that moment you never, you never saw it. In life, all what you need is patience. Yahatz is teaching you. Have a patience. Not everything has to be right now. How did Rabbi Nachman Brasta write? The word Savdanut. Savdanut in Hebrew is patient. Come to a numerical number 548. Savdanut. 548. You know which word come in Hebrew for 548? Another word? Nitzachta. Nitzachta, no, new tzaddik, chetaf, is 548. You know why? Because in order to win life, Nitzachta is to be a winner, you need patience. 548. Yachatz is to teach you patience. Last but not least, I know today we're going to need an extra money. Next week I'm not going to see you, we're going to be in another setup. And the week after we're going to be in the holidays. So it's going to be three weeks from now. Or actually almost one month, Emmanuel. Once a month you have to. So next time when we come in, when we bring the class, you will going to see once again. I will ask all of you, Basrat Hashim, to remember the message that we shared today. And the Almighty God will bless all of you to have a long life Amen. and a healthy life. Amen. And you're all going to be married to go out from all the obstacles and the slavery that we have had. We are slavery to our anger. We are slavery to our laziness. We are slavery to our egos. We are slavery to all the bad character that we have. We are slavery to our behavior. We are slavery to our Yetzirah. Yetziat Mitzrayim meaning go out from your limitation. If people tell you you cannot be rich, do not believe in them. Do not listen to them. You can become. If people tell you you cannot be Gadol Israel, it's too late. Why you become religious? You're not 20, you're 30 years old. You're going to tell him Rabbi Akiva became religious in the age of 40 and he became the biggest rabbi in the world history. Do not put on yourself any limitation. We are above all limitation. Mitzrayim is limitation. Mitzrayim. My blessing to all of us that we're going to go out from all our limitation, to become the best husband, the best wife, to become the best parents, to become the best people and business-wise, to become the best people, spirituality-wise, spatially, spatially, let us say amen. amen. And may God will take all of us from our general limitation to see Mashir Tzitken, let us say amen. amen. J J uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, if you have, if you want me to send you a zen of needy families, of family that need before Pesach, please send me text message, either to the group or either to individual. I believe all of you is getting individual messages. I will send you zen direct from your account to the family account. Thank you very much. Can you add one of them to your group? How come you don't have it? What's the phone? Mine or my husband's a rookie. Yeah, let's start with you. 917.